Welcome, I'm David Geiger. The House Agriculture Committee continued its Farm Bill review this week. The meeting was on the state of credit for young, beginning, and underserved producers. Farmers and ag economists told the committee excessive loan requirements, discrimination, and harsh economic problems are making it harder to get into and stay in farming. Illinois farmer Adam Brown testified he qualified for the Conservation Stewardship Program. He started no-till and other conservation programs, but then his grandfather passed away, leading to tight margins and liquidation sales, including non-essential farm equipment. The most painful sale being that of the first tractor that my dad <laughs> ever rode on. A 1950 Ford Ferguson T20, which brought in $1,480. And while, while that was a difficult and emotional step to take, the survival of my farm for the next generation is my top pro priority, just like it was for the generation that passed it on to me. Brown says even those tough business decisions were not enough. He was already in the process of buying his uncle and dad's share of the operation. Cash flow and debt loads were strained as he needed to buy several hundred more acres. So he went to the Farm Service Agency. Its direct farm ownership joint financing loan program looked like a good fit for the transaction to make a 50-50 split for the operation. But to do so, Brown needed cooperation from other parts of the department. That meant he needed to change the business formation from a partnership to a sole proprietorship, which resulted in changes to USDA paperwork. The unwillingness of NRCS to review my application to CSP because of an administrative paperwork error remains a singular source of frustration and speaks to the inefficiencies of government that oftentimes prevent new and beginning farmers from gaining access to the programs they need to stay afloat until they have their feet under them. Brown says the next farm bill has to ensure all who qualify for a loan can get one and that loans keep pace with the rising cost of farming. And at the end of the week, our analyst Austin Schroeder has the market recap. Yeah, well, we've uh, kind of seen a little bit of uh, the market's kind of been dri dribbling a little bit lower, uh, I guess, to start the week uh, on corn. It, it kind of had a, had a pretty decent bounce coming uh, later in the week. Uh, we, we have a, a drier and, and uh, I guess, warmer forecast for, for the basically the, the rest of July. Uh, we did get a little bit of rain, um, I, I believe, across the eastern Eastern Iowa and Illinois uh, a little bit today, and then parts of uh, Wisconsin too. So that might be um, limiting some of the, some of those gains. But uh, but overall, I think we're we're, we're market trying to buy a little bit of that uh, uh, dry store here for the end of July. Uh, yeah, cattle have definitely had a strong week here. Uh, feeders kind of led the way uh, heading uh, the first few days of the week. They kind of leveled off here uh, heading into the weekend, but they they had a really strong week. Cash cash uh, feeders have been uh, really strong here. Uh, across much of uh, much of the country over the last few weeks, I think the, the herd liquidation is kind of starting to show that we're we're running short on feeders, and they've kind of led the way here. Yeah, hogs have, have definitely uh, been kind of leveling off here over the last few weeks. They've, they've kind of been uh, creeping higher. Uh, so that, I mean, we, we de definitely get a seasonal peak here typically in, in the cash hogs, and we've kind of seen that a little bit later. That's all I have for the agribusiness report today. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you again next time. We have our stories online. Head over to who13.com, click news, and then agribusiness.